Hello and welcome. In this video we're going to take a look at the Land XML file format and how to import and export um, Land XML files from cube to cubed. Uh, for those who don't know much about Land XML, I'd recommend you head to the www.landxml.org. Uh, Land XML isn't developed by any single um, company, it's sort of developed by a community of different um, interest groups. Um, and this is where they upload all the information, the latest news about the format and a lot of useful resources. So the first thing I'd recommend anyone do is uh, download the Carlson Precision 3D Land XML viewer. Uh, that's a free viewer you can use to have a look at files. Um, on this website there's also a lot of sample files that you can use so you can kind of open them and have a look at um, how these files are set up and the data that they can contain. Um, so the principal use case of Land XML files is for transferring um, engineering and surveying uh, data between different um, tools such as Autodesk Civil 3D, Kubler Cubed, Carlson products or Bentley products. Um, if you go to this link you can see some of the software, sort of list of some of the software that supports the format so it's quite an extensive list of um, different tools that are commonly used in the construction industry. Um, so I've downloaded a um, one of these sort of sample files here, subdivision.xml and I'll just load that in the Carlson Precision 3D the free viewing tool that I already have downloaded and install, installed earlier. Um, so we can see it contains two surfaces which we're going to import into Kubler Cubed and it also has some line work. Um, for the purpose of importing into Kubler Cubed we're only interested in the uh, surfaces, we don't import line work as of yet, um, but we can export line work to a land XML file from Kubler Cubed. So the slightly strange thing about this is that the, um, the surface that is we're going to compare to the existing here is actually floating a thousand foot above uh, the existing surface so in Kubler cube we're going to have to adjust that down um, on, on to be in the right location but that's not a problem because there is a uh, functionality to do that into Kubler cube so uh, I'll go straight to Kubler cube now and I'll show you how easy it is to get that um, data in so the the earthworks feature that um, supports Land XML files is this triangle surface um, that that is the, the element that you use for importing pre-existing triangulations or tins uh, defined in a different uh, program. So we click plus triangle surface, select the file that we downloaded, um, sub subdivision.xml, select the surface. So the two surfaces in that file come up, EG and FG. So the existing is uh, the EG one. We click OK, and there it is. It's as simple as that. Um, for those used to importing information from contour lines and out, um, uh, tracing off PDF and uh, CAD files, it's, it might come as a revelation how quickly that comes into the program. But because the Land XML can st store triangulations and Kubler Cube is a triangulation software, um, it's sort of natively communicating native data between. So there's no additional options. Land XML also stores the units. Um, in the file itself, so it doesn't have to prompt you what units you want to import. Um, it already knows that, so Kubler can read that information. So we'll do the same on the proposed now. We'll just uh, add triangle surface, select that file again, subdivision.xml, and we'll select the second surface, and it will come in, as I mentioned before, about a th thousand feet up in the wrong location. So what we're going to have to use is this uh, option that a lot of elements have which is to not only define the levels but also define the level and an offset so we're going to offset that thousand feet so it comes down to its correct location um, and the cut and fill makes sense uh, so there we go uh, we've got that cut and fill done in no time at all with those two um, land XML surfaces so those if you are in a situation where you're working with uh, colleagues that um, use tools like Autodesk Civil 3D and they have a surface that you need to do a cut and fill you, comparison with in Kubler Cube. It's definitely worth asking if they can give you the data in the Land XML format because that's what we recommend for transferring surfaces between Kubler Cube and other programs. Um, CAD can also be used um, with CAD polyface meshes, but that's, that can, there are complications in that that can cause issues. So Land XML we found is a lot, um, is the one we recommend. Um, so one last thing to say about that is um, you can't within Kubler Cubed actually edit these um, triangulations. We don't have those sort of low-level 
triangle mesh modeling tools, you can use other earthworks um, elements to make amendments to it. So to basically overwrite the elevations from the triangulation with cube cubed um, elements. So if I wanted to change this to a flat area and get rid of this, uh, this sort of berm that they've got here, I could click add platform and I can just sort of draw a, uh, a platform element over that section and it will edit it. So you can edit it using say a feature surface or platform or slope with Cuba Cubes tools, but you can't, you, you aren't going in and actually changing the triangles. Um, so you can see there that section's being, being modified by using uh, Cuba Cubes uh, tools. Um, so right, we'll move on now to uh, exporting a Cuba Cube project into Land XML. The reasons why you might want to export um, Kubla Cube data into Land XML is to obviously use it in a different, um, use the models that you've created in Kubla Cube in a different program. Maybe another design program where you can add trees and buildings and do a visualization with more detail. Or another um, major use for this data is for use in machine control systems. Um, so in relation to machine control systems, I'm going to start by um, mentioning how you specify control points for geolocating the project in your machine control system, because obviously um, that's a major requirement that you will need to uh, geolocate the model before you can use GPS to position yourself in the site. Um, so to do that, you actually have to add three points into your existing surface and make sure that they have the tag CP. So if they're inside your boundary, they need to have sort of relevant elevations um, to the existing surface so you don't disturb the model. But you can actually um, put the points outside the um, boundary. However, you do need to be able to locate those points in the real world. So in this example, say I've got these points that they, they could correlate. Let's suggest, say that these points, at the corners of the boundary actually correlate to something that I can geolocate. Um, on the actual site so I can map so I can kind of use those three points in my machine control system to um, bring that data to locate that data so this is quite um, sort of a technical subject and if it doesn't make sense um, it's probably best to ignore it if you're not doing machine control systems but if you are um, I'm just mentioning this so you're kind of aware of how to do this process and if you want more information um, let us know and we'll explain in more detail. So I'll just quickly like demonstrate by creating three points outside the boundary in this um, um, situation. I'll give them the tag CP. So when I export to CAD, um, I have three points that I can use, uh, sorry, not export to CAD, export to land XML. I have three points I can use to geolocate the site because um, the if they're outside the boundary, it doesn't matter what elevations are. Um, so if the points have CP, the land XML exporter knows um, to put those into a spe special um, section for um, in the land XML for the purposes of geolocating and machine control systems. Okay, so if you're not working with machine control, you can ignore that whole section. Um, and we'll get on to exporting the other elements to land XML. So go file, export, land XML, and then we have a variety of options to decide what information we export from our kubeq project into the land xml format now it can sometimes be advantageous to not export everything um, because you don't want your file cluttered with um, information that you might not have a use for so this is where um, you might uncheck some of these options because you you don't need um, you don't need anything unlike a cad format you, the land xml isn't necessarily separated into layers so you can find that you have a lot of information that can kind of be confusing and the first thing is that you can select what phase phases you export to Land XML. So by default, just the selected is um, just the selected is it um, selected. Then you can choose to include the import data, say the contour lines, points that you've used to define your um, elevation information in Kubla Cubed. Um, I'm not going to export that in this one. And you can have you also have the triangulations, which is the surfaces. This is the main sort of thing that you'll probably be exporting most of the time. So you usually keep that ticked. Uh, you can choose to export just the disturbance area or the whole surface. Um, in some applications you might need just the disturbance area, but um, this time I'm going to export everything. You can also generate contour lines and generate graded data from the surface um, that you can export to Land XML. Uh, some programs might not support TINs, so that might be useful for that if you want the grid gridded data. 
in Latin XML, if you had a program that only used gridded data, you would you would need to include that gridded data generated from the tin. And likewise with the contour lines, you might need them for some for another application. Um, I'm going to include the contour lines, but ignore the gridded data for it now. Um, so this last section is the earthworks lines. And this these lines are useful for kind of um, reference referencing various uh, things on the site, like the boundary of platforms or slopes that you've defined in the cube cube file. Also, it gives you a the cut and fill line. Um, so this can be quite useful in machine control. You do have the tins that can tell you the elevation um, of the proposed and the existing, but um, also it can be useful to have the cut and fill lines as well um, in the file as an extra reference. So we'll click OK and a, I will save that um, to the desktop. Um, the cut and fill lines I was just talking about, some old machine control systems don't actually support tins. So they're really useful in that situation where um, you have a machine control system that doesn't support tins. It will only show line work so that that cut and fill can tell you where you need to be cutting, where you need to be filling on the site. So when I export it, it should automatically open with um, my default XML viewer, which is the Carlson program that we uh, exported previously. So um, here we have the proposed tin and the line work that we've exported. You can see down the side here that we've got um, the different sections for the different elements that we've uh, that we've exported. We've got the earthworks lines, we've got the generator contour lines. Uh, if you expand them, you can get extra um, details like on the earthworks lines, I've, it's got different sections, the outlines, the fill boundary, the cut boundary, um, and here the generated contour. So you can see how powerful this system is that you can export this surface and view it in this program. You could load it into a machine control system and then you can have that on, on your on site. Um, this one only has the proposed surface. Often you'll need to select the existing as well. Um, so that's a brief overview of the uh, Land XML format. If you've got any questions, of course, uh, post in the comments or send us send questions to our forum. It's quite a complicated subject and we're going to be doing further videos on um, specifically exporting data to some of the main machine control systems like Trimble, Topcon. Um, so look out for those videos that will be coming soon. Thanks for watching.